Kansas City coming away victorious in this one, 27 to 20. This one was really close down to I, I mean the absolute wire, a game of inches, a, if you a will. Toenail. They won, a toenail. They won a by game, a toenail. A game of toenails, if you will. We're gonna break this down. But like let's okay, let's talk about the Kansas City Chiefs first. Let's get to their top five graded players. Chris Jones, surprise, surprise, the very top of this list. Um, an eighty two point eight overall grade. Wide receiver Rushi Rice with an eighty eighty point oh grade. Leo Chanel, their linebacker, seventy nine point nine. Creed Humphrey earn is seventy nine point four. And then tight end Noah Gray. Showing up. Hell yeah, brother. The other 78.0. Patrick Mahomes would have been the highest on this group with an 87.9 if he wasn't separate just for being a quarterback here. And then on Baltimore, if we flip to the other side, Isaiah Likely, who was almost the hero in this game. Top grade, 91.8. Uh, Odafe Owe, their edge rusher, came up with a big sack, uh, 85.4 grade, which is great. It's just great to see him back um, out there and playing healthy along with Ojabo, too. Um, Todd Linderbaum, 73.8. Overall great, Derrick Henry in his debut, a 67.9. Ronnie Stanley, a 67.5. And then Lamar Jackson, a 65.6. Uh, we'll go a little bit quicker with these, but what's the stat that told the story for you here with this um, one? For me, it's the Ravens wide receivers. And I just think, I know Isaiah Likely was great, and Mark Andrews is working his way back from a bad injury. And they're going to be tight end heavy, and they're going to constantly be in 12 personnel. But look, as a unit, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, mostly nine catches for 96 yards and a 55.8 receiving grade. And I know Bateman had the big catch that set up the dramatic ending at the end there. But in the second half, their wide receivers, when they were behind the whole way, only four catches for 57 yards. Well, I, I don't know where this team would have been without, one, Lamar Jackson just being Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. and two, Isaiah likely stepping up in a massive way. Yeah, It was it was the part of this off offseason where I was – a little bit confused. Odell Beckham leaves, right? And he was your number two guy last year behind Flowers. They, I just don't, I don't know that they have enough at receiver. I, I and I know they're going to play. They're the only team in football that would come out for a two minute drill in, in just 12 personnel. They're the only team in football that would do I, it. It was, it's, they, they just don't have them. And I know like, where's a guy like Tylen Wallace or something like that. But when I see them running a whole two minute drill in 12 personnel, that's, that's, just crazy optics. Well, to I don't, me. It feels funny. Yeah, and I know they're not normal. Like right, likely, I don't, and I don't mind they're, it. They're not it's normal. Their identity. Put your five best players on the field. It's not. They're not. They're not normal tight ends. They're both really good. They maybe right. They may be like two of the twelve best tight ends in the league. Right. But it's it's that question. For, it's going to be the wide receiver question for me all season. With see, the see, I thought that we'd have wide receiver questions. The question that that I'm more concerned about, and my stat that told the story here, is actually the run blocking from the Ravens' uh, new offensive lineman. When you look at the new offensive lineman compared to who they had on the offensive line last year, left guard Andrew Voorhees, just a 51.0 run blocking grade against the Chiefs. Right guard Daniel Falele, 55.0. Um, right tackle Patrick McCarry. 53.2 and then if you want to throw a Roger Rosengarten in there as well 48.2 because that wasn't his forte when he was uh, with the Washington Huskies so you look at all of the new additions for the Ravens not holding up their end of the bargain in the area they need to most which is run blocking if this team wants to stay towards their identity they've got to be better up front I already thought that we'd have questions with the receivers I think that that's a question that we were going to have to try to answer every week throughout the season that wasn't really a surprise to me what's a surprise to me is that this unit really wants to run the football and I need these players to be better at it they got to win up front a lot more if the Ravens want to achieve what they want to achieve this year and I think that they can but that is, to me, the stat that told the story is the new faces specifically on the Ravens' offensive line did not play well when it came to exactly what the Ravens wanted to do on offense. Uh, most impressive for me is Chris Jones. Wow, shocked, surprised. Just do whatever. Just, 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 I mean, it's put just it a, in Sharpie. Do it every, just just a, do it every week. It's just another game for Chris yeah. Jones. 20.4 pass rush win percentage. Um, and if he sustained that for a full season, it'd be the highest of his career. So it's just... He just ageless. He's incredible. He's one of the best defensive players in the league, no doubt about it. Most disappointing, Sky Moore. Uh, Sky Moore experience could be over here in uh, in Kansas City. Just played 19% of the offensive snaps despite all the changes that they had and all the receivers that they needed to step up. He played just 19% of the offensive snaps. Didn't play a single special team snap either. So uh, depth value is also going away for Sky Moore. So I, I just it's it's been disappointing for somebody that I liked a lot coming out of the draft. It just it just does not feel like he's going to get on the field with Kansas City unless somebody 
or multiple receivers end up going down for injury. But what about you? Most impressive, most disappointing? I'll tell you what, one of my favorite things in the NFL is is the Chiefs and all the young players they keep finding on defense. And, and there's one at linebacker who was spectacular, Leo Chanel. Uh, what, a, what a versatile, first of all, what a fun player to watch. What a versatile player. You know, he comes out of Wisconsin. I believe he was the high, I believe he came out of Wisconsin with the highest run defense grade in the country the year he was drafted. So they knew he could stop. He's a freak, dude. They put him at nose tackle. Like, as a stand-up nose tackle. 20, 26 snaps at linebacker. Eight, yeah. 18 off the edge. Four in the slot. Okay, we, you saw the overall grade before. Three pressures, seven tackles, three stops, two batted passes, allowed one yard in coverage, and did a really good job. There's a list, Trevor, of the hardest jobs in football. Blocking Miles Garrett, covering Tyreek Hill, mm-hmm. uh, doing anything against Josh Allen, right? One of, the, one of the things on that list is being the spy against Lamar Jackson. He did a really nice job of it. He was, he was every, every, every week you see a team, okay, who's the spy? Is it going to be a safety? Is it going to be a lineman? Is it going to be some sort of athlete? In this game, it was Leo Chennault. And, and I know Lamar had a bunch of rushing yards scrambling, and sometimes Lamar Jackson's going to win that battle. But I thought, actually, it could have been a lot worse. And Chennault made a couple really nice, some really nice stops on Jackson, dissuading him from scrambling even more than he already did. Um, I, I, just another great young player for the Chiefs yep. at their disposal. And, yep. and Brett Veach and Spe- Steve Spagnuolo, they keep finding him. Most disappointing, it sounds funny, because he was fourth, I believe, on the Ravens list uh, there that we had for the highest graded. Um, Derrick Henry, 13 carries. Oh, yeah. 13 carries. And I'm not saying it's all First drive was good. Uh, right, and this is the thing. Six carries in the first quarter and only seven the rest of the game. And and this is. I wonder if it was just because they were not winning up front. Yeah, you know, and that's part of it. They and, to. and it's hard for me to say it's just Henry. But you look at the line though, and you go 13 carries, four to six yards, the touchdown on the first drive, but only forced one missed tackle on the 13 carries, and not a single run of 10 plus yards. So I I just wonder. This was the part philosophically for the Ravens. I know I'm dragging this out, where they didn't go and get more receivers, and they go and get Derrick Henry, who only played one third down the entire game. Okay, one, and it was a third and one that he got the ball and convert. I think on that first drive, mm-hmm. only played. Otherwise, it was Justice Hill, and Justice Hill put up numbers in the receiving game, right? Yeah. If it wasn't Derrick Henry, and the the headline was Ravens signed two down back in the off season, wouldn't we be worrying more that they didn't spend those resources at receiver? And I know it's Derrick Henry, and I know he's I know he's going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, he's, I was, I was going to say it is different when you put the diff- name to it. It's different though. when it is Derrick Henry. Yeah, but again, they lead the league in rushing every year because of Lamar and whoever, whatever backs, and because of the run blocking generally mm-hmm. before having to replace three starters. I I just wonder for as much as people that you know we think it's. It is a great fit. It's fun to think about those two guys in the same backfield. And this is going to be future weeks where they're not playing the mastermind in Spagnola, where it's going to be better. But I just I just wonder about that part where I go. And, and, and you know the other thing I saw too, Trev? Not just the Ravens. Multiple teams down a reasonable amount, let's say in the middle of the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Seven, maybe ten. And they just stop running the ball. You have, with that much time, you still have your whole offense at your disposal. So if Derrick Henry's that guy... Okay, we're down a touchdown with six minutes left in the third. Run your whole offense. You don't have to drop back and throw it every play. It's uh, not, I'm it's with not a, you. It's not yeah, a two-minute drill. So I, Especially, I, that's what the criticism was with the Ravens in their loss to the Chiefs in the playoffs yeah, last year. and this is two in a row that we've seen this. For Derrick Henry to get only seven carries in the last three quarters, I, I just don't think makes sense. And, and it's not just the Ravens. I saw multiple teams do this this weekend, NFL and college. I go, you still understand the score and understand that not everything has to be a two-minute drill. 